just want to read from Psalm 146. It says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. Amen. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. Yes, I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Amen. Amen. Put, don't put your confidence in powerful people. Yeesh. There is no help for you there. Yes. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth and all their Amen. plans die with them. Amen. Isn't that powerful? But re be joyful. Yes. Joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, Amen. whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He keeps every promise forever. Amen. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. Yes, the Lord will reign forever. Yes. He will be your God. Yes. O Jerusalem, throughout all generations, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to just let that sink into your heart and into your spirit today. Be joyful. Be joyful. Amen. Amen. Joyful are those who have the Lord, the God of Israel, as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. And also note, he keeps every promise forever. He gives justice. He gives food to the hungry. And the Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. And the Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. So, Father God, as we come into your presence to join together in unity and with one accord to praise you, to worship you, and as we prepare our hearts to receive and to feast at your table this morning and to hear your word, that word that changes us from the inside, Amen. that word that gives us life, it is healing to our body and health to and strength to our bones. Lord. I thank you, Lord, there's healing in your presence this yes, morning. Lord. For Amen. every promise is yes and amen in Christ Lord. Jesus. So I declare right now Lord. as we worship that your healing grace is flowing from your very throne room and there is nothing can hinder nothing can stop us and Lord we receive from your presence this morning your goodness your mercy and your grace I speak to weak weakness and bodies and I say be strong in the name of Jesus I speak to all heaviness and I say be lifted off because as we put on the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness it flees in the name of Jesus I speak healing to every part of our bodies in Jesus name because in the presence of the of our God there is fullness of joy so infirm has to leave weakness has to leave sickness has to leave disease is destroyed by the very joy that comes from the presence of our God there is liberty in his presence today hallelujah glory to the Lamb of God we have just sung what a mighty God we serve and it is good to give thanks and in, and I can't remember what psalm it is it's, it says um, give thanks to the Lord for he is good yeah. and it says let the people repeat it let the people say it over and amen. over again his faithful love endures oh, forever Lord, amen. amen so therefore nothing can separate us from his love Holy glory Lord. so we will enter his gates with praise Lord. and with thanksgiving amen because he has made us glad not because everything is going right but because he is alive and because he lives we live also amen glory just declare this right now i will not leave this house as i came in 
I, I'm going out of this house stronger than before. I'm leaving this house healed because it is my, it is my bread. It is a promise of God. Amen. I am redeemed. Glory, we believe in Lord. again because it, it just it thrills my heart when David say, said this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it yeah. he was talking about the day of grace yeah. he was talking about that day when Jesus would come and change everything Amen. when he would come in that new and living way Amen. and we have entered into that new day that new covenant yes. that day of grace yes. and his Amen. grace is sufficient hallelujah his grace is sufficient for whatever we need, whatever we desire, whatever he has called us to do. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. We are in that new and living way. This is the day that David looked forward to. But this is the day that we rejoice in right now. Hallelujah. say that I'm glad and the devil's mad for I'm the lad he thought he had <laughs> we bring a sacrifice of praise
Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us all the way. Through everything, you have been there. Whether we knew it or not, you were there. When we look back, we can say, my God was with me all the way. And we say, thank you, Lord.
my trust in you, oh God. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul.
Lord, we believe by faith that you are here. You fill this room. Your glory is here. Your power is here. Your peace is here. And Lord, I know that we don't go by feelings, but I ask you right now to touch, just to touch any part of anybody in this house right now with that real touch of your hand, with the breath of God. As we declare to get a touch from the Lord is so real. It cannot be denied. No one will talk us out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. If you draw Touch from the Lord is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. If you draw. Temple of the Lord. We're going to make our confession of faith. We're going to let the Lord reveal to us the finished work of the cross. 
But the Lord revealed to us what prophet Isaiah could see all them hundreds of years before Calvary. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. That's the gospel of the kingdom in a nutshell. That's the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus said would be preached on all the earth and then the end will come. Jesus bore our sons, our sorrows. He carried our sicknesses and our diseases. Everything that hinders our peace was upon him on that cross. So he carried the penalty for our son. He carried that demon of oppression and depression. All mental health. Everything that hinders our peace was upon him on the cross. And by his stripes, the 39 stripes that he bore was for our physical healing. Jesus covered it all on the cross. And as we come around the table to fulfill the, the command of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, this do until he comes. We're making our confession of faith that we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. We are liberated mentally because Jesus bore it on the cross. And we're healed physically because of those stripes that he bore. The only qualification to come around the table of the Lord is to have genuinely repented of our sins and turned unto God, called upon the name of Jesus, called him to come under our hearts and be our Lord, our Savior, our healer, our deliverer. As we make this confession of faith today, let the Holy Spirit just burn that in our spirits. That whatever need we may face today or tomorrow, Calvary covered it all. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord in Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord in Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord and Jesus. Love of Kola and Shitty. Thank you, Jesus, I give you praise. Leave our cola, shadow, love of our own. Hallelujah, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God. We're going to make our confession of faith. I confess and I decree that by the stripes of Jesus I am already healed. I walk in divine health. I walk in divine strength. 
Therefore I command anything of shit touches my body or my mind dies immediately in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Give you praise. Supper being ended, Jesus took the cup and he said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink you all of it. It's the Lord's desire that we avail of everything that he bought and paid for at Calvary. I confess and I decree that I am a child of the Most High God. I've been born again of the Spirit of God. I've been washed in the precious blood of Jesus. And I overcome every day by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, I give you praise. If we can turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews 13. We were there a few weeks ago. It's mighty to see the reality of the, the power of God that his people carry. We carry the presence of God everywhere we go. We carry the anointing of God everywhere we go. Hebrews 13, verse 8 and 9. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, and with which have not just profited them that have been occupied in them. We're not to be occupied by doctrines of meats and this and that and do's and don'ts. We're to have our heart established by the grace of God. And the testimonies that we've heard today backs that up. It's the grace of God that does the work, opens up hearts to receive. So we have our heart established by grace, or with grace, is the plan that God has for us. If we go to the Gospel of John, chapter 15, we begin to see how we be established with grace. To be established in Jesus Christ is to be established in grace. And John 15 verse 1 said, I am the true vine. That's Jesus speaking here. Jesus is the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Jesus come to do the will of his father. He came to be that true vine. The will of God. And in verse 2 it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now we know that Jesus Christ is the vine and he lives in us and we live in him. And when we allow that grace of God to establish our hearts, to establish our motives and everything we do. It's the love and the power of God that's flowing through us. Now we note there in verse 2, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Who's the he in that verse? The he in that verse is God the Father. So it's not to be mixed up with John 10 where Jesus is talking 
And he says that he gives us eternal life. And we follow him. And no man shall pluck us out of his hand. So we're not talking about man in this verse 2. We're talking about God the Father. So it's impossible to be established in the grace of God and not produce some sort of fruit. Whatever we're called unto, we are called to bear fruit. And God will keep encouraging us by His Holy Spirit. God will keep encouraging us by His Word that we will respond in the right way to the Word of God. We will respond the right way to the leading of the Holy Spirit and we will yield to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And verse 3 he says, Now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now we know that we're redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. But he says here, Now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. We're clean because we obeyed the word of God and we come to that place of repentance and we called upon the name of Jesus. So the word of God is first and foremost in every decision that we make. And if we're following the word of God, verse 4 says, Abide in me. You see, we're called to abide in, in the vine. Just like the branches of a tree abide in the trunk of the tree. The, bread, the branches couldn't even live without the substance that comes from the trunk. Jesus is talking about a vine and grapes and so on here. But if we want to have our hearts fully established in the grace of God, it's because we are willing to receive the grace of God. We cannot give anything until we receive it. Because the word of God says, without him we can do nothing. So he wants us to abide in Jesus. Abide in me and I in you. As branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Now, if we take our sister's example and their testimony, if they hadn't have been by abiding in the vine, they would have nothing to carry in to these needy people. But because they're abiding in the vine, because they've been established in the grace of God, they have the grace of God to pass on. They have the yoke to store and anointing of the Holy Spirit to pass on. But if we're going to believe the lie that the anointing of the Spirit of God is no longer available to the people of God, it simply means we have nothing to pass on. Because to bear fruit in Jesus Christ is passing on the power of God, passing on the grace of God the knowledge that it's, a, that it's available to live in Christ. we got to abide in Christ, and he will abide in us. We cannot expect to bear fruit of our own strength. That's why we wait upon the Lord. The Scripture says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. If we want to pass strength on to others, we've got to wait on the Lord to get it. They'll renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles. we got to be waiting on the Lord to have that knowledge of it rising up and wings as an eagle. we got to have that grace of God. we got to have that receiving heart that we're receiving the 
the benefits of Jesus Christ on the cross. And then we will renew our strength, we'll mount up with wings as eagles, we'll run and not be weary. How do we teach people to run and not be weary? By passing on the knowledge of the grace of God. We'll walk and we'll not faint. Because we're not putting ourselves under the stress that so many people put themselves under because they've got an idea in their heart that they've something to do and they've never relied upon the grace of God to do it. <coughs> we never need to come under stress whenever our hearts is established in the grace of God because it's His empowering ability that keeps us going. And in verse 5 he said again, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him the same bringeth forth the much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Yielding to Jesus Christ, accepting the plan of salvation, and abiding in Jesus, we will bring forth fruit, because we know without him we can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, cast them into the fire, and they are burned. This is to do with the believers in Christ. And in verse 2 it said, Every branch in me. We know to back up Halley's doctrines, they make out that people that turn back from Paul and Jesus are still all right. But verse 2, it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taken away. They're back onto the blindness that the devil has blinded their heart that they ever needed God in the first place. And in verse 6 there he said, If ye abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. There's a going on with Jesus Christ. There's a going on in the grace of God. We don't come to the place where we think we have made it. We can forget about God, we can forget about His grace. And we'll just continue on on our own way and somehow we're going to make it. The scripture doesn't teach it at all. And verse 7 says, If ye abide in me, my words abide in you, and ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If we're abiding in Jesus Christ, and his words are abiding in us, we will be continually praying in the will of God. We'll be continually praying in the plan of God. I met a man one day, and he's quoting verses like this, and he said, I believe in God, 7 Series BMW. This man neither works, nor once. And I said, well, if you wake up tomorrow morning and there's a 7 Series sitting at the door, could you run it? Could you tax it? Could you insure it? You see, that was flesh. When we're walking in the will of God, we will be praying and communing with God that our every need has been met. What would be the point of God giving us something that we can't afford to keep? So that's about abiding in the vine. God will undertake for us when we're living on the will of God and talking to him according to his plan and his purpose. And in verse 8 shows us the importance 
of the believer bearing fruit. To follow church is not necessarily bearing fruit. An evangelist can appoint himself as a pastor and he can gather a crowd but there'll be no depth there'll be no real fruit because it's outside of the plan and the purpose of God God wouldn't have put pastors' hearts in people if anybody could do God wouldn't put the heart of an evangelist in anybody if anybody could do it. We are what we are by the grace of God. Paul made that statement. And verse 8 says, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciple. We want to be the disciples of the Lord and will only be the disciples of the Lord as we walk in the plan of God. We walk in His grace and we develop in His grace. And the, the real purpose is to glorify the Father which is in heaven. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. There's a walking in the love of God. And many times whenever we love people enough to tell them the truth, that other hypocrites will come on and say, your problem is you have no love. We tell people the truth. Whether it fits the situation or not, we tell the truth. Because the love of the Father is at work in us. We never compromise the truth. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. We cannot keep the commandments of God if we're not abiding in the love of God. We are just reversing to the old covenant, where the old covenant made commands, Be ye holy as I am holy. The command of the Old Testament, but no enabling power. So it's only as we walk in the love of God and the mercy of God that we can bear this fruit because it's Jesus that's living in and through us. And we'll only keep his commandments when we're abiding in the love of God. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. The bearing of fruit creates the joy of Christ within the believer. So as we walk in the commands of God and we walk in the love of God, the reason given in verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. So we see the joy of Christ in the believer completing the joy of the believer. We'll read that again. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. The joy of Christ in the believers connected to our joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. We can't separate these things. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. The joy of the Lord is connected to the love of Christ, enabling us to love one another, looking out for one another. And then he goes on to say, Ye are my friends. We here we begin to disconnect from religious teaching and the gospel of the kingdom. He said, Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. The condition of friendship with Jesus Christ and the reality of the grace of God be manifest through us 
that we com obey the commands of the word of God. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. <laughs> we have a relationship, a friendship with Jesus. And he's passing on the knowledge of the Father. And as we allow that knowledge to take root in us, we allow our hearts to be established by the grace that through salvation's plan. We're chained for new creatures. He said, Henceforth I call you not servant, but for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friend for all things, many things, all things. Knowledge is available to the true believer. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me. When we take these the verses of Scripture, we see how some people may make a mistake. Jesus said, you haven't chosen me, but I have chosen you. Now some people might use that verse to go down the line that there's people born to be lost. That's not scripture, that's a hellish doctor. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Covers everybody that was born in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he, he said, I have chosen you. He's chosen the whole world. But they'll not, they'll not respond. And not only has he chosen us, he has redeemed us. Man thinks he has the power to ordain. If man's ordaining somebody to a ministry that the Holy Spirit hasn't put within them, that's a hindrance. Jesus said, I have chosen you, I have ordained you, that you should go forth. Go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit, that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. The condition to answer prayer is tied to the call and the ordaining of the people of God. What are some of the examples of the true servant of God? God has called us to the work. He's ordained us for the work. We're livers to bring forth fruit. Our prayers are answered. And we're lovers of all men. That's a big ask. Because during my years of man management, I come across people apart from the will of God and the love of God and the mercy of God, you couldn't love them even if you read them. But the command is given, and no command of the Lord is without the enabling power. We're lovers of all men. We love them enough to tell them the truth. And here we got to take the word of God over the theory that God's sovereign. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is powerful enough to be sovereign. But the Word of God teaches that He give that over on a number of occasions. If we go to the second epistle, second epistle of Peter, chapter three. I'm bringing this into being because some people think that no matter what the devil's up to, 
God's sovereign, we shouldn't pray to stop it. Why then did God give us power and authority to use his name? Second Peter 3, verse 8 says, Beloved, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. We don't try to bring God's plan into our time. We're in a, we're in a time. God's in eternity. Then in verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us words. How many times has God to tell us about something before we even hear that he's talking to us? He's long suffering. He's not the God of one strike and you're out. He's long suffering. To us, not one that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Not one that any should perish. He has decided not to be sovereign when it comes to the salvation of man. He's decided not to be sovereign when it comes to a whole other thing. Because we know from the teaching of Jesus Christ alone that people perished and went to hell. And God says clearly here he's not willing for that to happen, but man has got his destiny in his own hand. Man can decide to reject salvation and go to hell. It's not the will of God that he goes. But God has made us with a free will. It's not the desire of God that we mess up our call in God. It's not His will, but it happens. It's God's plan because He said He has chosen us, He has ordained us to go and to bear fruit and bring that fruit to the Father and fruit that remains. So we need to realize that the grace of God is there for us to develop them and to be established them. But we have got to know the plan of God and what he's calling us to do. We've got to realize that God is above every one of us. The Word of God says we're the head, we're not the tail. We're from above and not from beneath. But above all that, God's on the throne. And it's only by the grace of God that we can receive from an almighty God. It's only by being established in that grace and understanding who we are in Christ. If we go to the book of Psalms, verse 61. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. David's calling upon the King of kings and the Lord of lords. David is the King of Israel, but he realizes there's a greater King. And he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He says, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. No matter where David may find himself, he's got this revelation that he needs to call upon a greater king. And we need to have that revelation continually flowing through us. Because of the grace of God, wherever we may find ourselves, we can call upon the one that's over all. 
We can call upon Jesus. We can call upon the Father. He says, from the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, situations may be getting rough. We may be in uncharted territory. But we're calling upon the one. And I just love this request of Jesus, or of David. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. No matter what our situation is, we can make that request to the Father. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We get our eyes off Jesus. We get under throne. We can make that request. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. We can be led from the midst of a battle to the rock that's higher than I. Verse 2 of Psalm 62. Here is the result of being fully established in the grace of God. He only is my rock. He only is my rock. We're not dependent on what we may have learned in a Bible college or we may have learned on YouTube or somewhere else. We've got that rock within us. He only is my rock. When we face difficulties, He only is my rock. When I died in August 1980, thank God I had that revelation. He alone is my rock. Not only is our rock, he's my salvation. I'm not dependent on any organization I'm not dependent on any religious ritual. I'm dependent upon Jesus Christ. He's my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. And I shall not be greatly remo removed. Maybe a battle going on. But I will not be greatly removed. I'll not be defeated. We will come through whenever we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to the rock that's higher than I. You may be listening to this today by some other means. You want to know how to be led to the rock that's higher than I. There's one way to connect to the vine, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's through being born again of the Spirit of God, washed in the precious blood of Jesus. If you haven't yet made that decision of you're still dependent on religious rituals, whatever they may be, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by him. So if you want to meet Jesus today, just a simple prayer, believe it in your heart. I'm not talking about making a half-hearted prayer. I'm talking about calling upon Jesus with full repentance. Just repeat this prayer and believe in your heart. Get out of idolatry or whatever you may be in. Find a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. And always have the Bible on your knee. Open. When man's preaching, see that it comes in line with the Word of God if it doesn't get out because time's too short and eternity's too long to be deceived over the salvation of your soul. If you want to know Jesus Christ, 
I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I call upon you. I repent of all my sin. And I'm asking you to come into my heart, into my life. Forgive me of all my sin. Deliver me. Help me to believe in my heart. Confess with my mouth that you are the Son of the living God. You are the Savior. You are the healer. You are the baptizer and the Holy Ghost and fire. You are the King, the common King. So I confess you as my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you have prayed that prayer and you have a need in your body, I want to pray with you in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you for these people that have called upon you. And Father, I ask you, Lord, for your healing fire to burn through them from head to toe, making them every whole whole in Jesus' name. I pray, Father God, that you will reveal yourself to them. Lord, that they will live in your manifest presence. Lord, that they will be filled with your Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray, lead them to a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church. Lord, that the rascality of the devil in religious circles in these days will not hinder them. But they'll be delivered, they'll be set free in Jesus' name. And Father God, I pray for this gathering here today. I pray, O oh God, household salvation. Every home represented, every family and family circle. Household salvation, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. And Father God, as we have rejoiced in your presence today, Lord, we rejoice under the mighty anointing of your Holy Spirit. Lord, let us go from this house today. Lord, bring in fruit to the Father and fruit that are mean. Lord, that we will see our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father glorified. Lord, because of the mighty working of your Holy Spirit in and through us, in Jesus' name. We pray for those that are not with us today. We pray, Lord, bless them, lead them, guide them, touch them, Lord. And Father God, that we will walk in divine health, will walk in divine strength. And Father God will be very, very careful to give you all the praise, give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And God's people said amen, amen. and shared it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God.